Midjourney is a very powerful AI image generator. It's gonna be a very short, quick, and step-by-step -step tutorial, so let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so first thing is first, you're going to want to download an application called Discord. So go ahead over to Google and type in Discord. All links are gonna be in the description below. Download. And then go ahead and download it for Windows, or if you're on Mac, download it for the Mac. After it's done downloading, let's go ahead and run the EXE. I already have it installed on my computer, so I'm actually gonna skip this part, but you're gonna click Run and you're just gonna install it the same way that you would any other normal program. Now let's go ahead and open up the Discord app that we just downloaded. The funny thing about Midjourney is you don't actually use it as like a standalone program that you typically would, like maybe Adobe Softwares or Google Chrome, whatever. You actually use the AI from within Discord. If you don't know what Discord is, Discord is like a voice, video, and chat app that people can use to communicate with each other. A lot of times you'll see like gamers or people who don't want to use Microsoft Teams or Zoom, they'll usually communicate over Discord. It's really efficient. It's actually my favorite communication platform. If you choose to use it in the future, that's great. If not, Midjourney is kind of funny because it works from within Discord. So you actually do have to get to know it a little bit and you will have to create an account. After you have Discord open, you're gonna create an account. Okay, so go down here to register, choose an email, username, password, date of birth, and hit continue. I already have an account, so I'm gonna go ahead and log into mine. So let's head over to midjourney.com. I think they have a really cool landing page. It's pretty interesting. And over on the right hand side, depending on if they update or not when you watch this, but you'll have two options, join the beta and sign in. If you're going to be using Midjourney a lot, if you're going to be using it every day, I would just recommend clicking signing in because then it's going to give you a choice to create an account if you would like. If you just want to create some quick images really fast, see if you like it, let's click join the beta. So here you can see that it actually opened up my Discord. You're gonna click Join Midjourney. All right, and as you can see, we started off in the Midjourney server. Everything will look very confusing at the beginning. You'll probably get some images here from other people that are creating them. Let's start off by going over how Discord works. I'm gonna dismiss this image here. So over on the left-hand side, you have something called servers. Servers are like rooms, rooms that you walk into and then people are inside those rooms. So that's what a server is. Right now, we are in the mid-journey server. You can see because of this white bar right here. If I click my all Arc design with friends, this is a server that I use to do weekly live sessions on Sunday. If I click that, you'll see that it gets activated. I'm gonna click back over to the mid-journey one now. Right next to the server column, you have different groups that you can hop into. Support, Newcomer Rooms, Newcomer Rooms 4, Chat, and each one of these are like categories. So Support is a category, and within Support you have Trial Support. So I'm sure if I go here, I can ask questions, right? And then other people can help you out. And you would use it just as a chat. See here at the bottom, I wrote test, test, test. I'm not gonna send that, they're gonna think I'm crazy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a server that we can use our own Midjourney bot into. So go over to add a server. Let's say create my own. Let's go ahead and skip this question for now. And let's name it my Midjourney images. Now click create. Let's head back over to our Midjourney server on the left hand side. And at the top, next to the search bar, you're gonna see something called show member list. Click that, find Midjourney bot, right click it, go to the profile, and click add to server. Next, select the server and do the server that we just created, my Midjourney images. Now click continue. All of this is okay, click authorize. I'm human, beep boop beep boop. All right, so now we can back out of that and head back over into the server that we created. And you will see over on the right hand side, if you open up your member list here, that Midjourney bot is in. So now we can start to use Midjourney. You can actually use Midjourney back in the Midjourney server here in the newbies rooms, but I like to create a server for myself. Otherwise, other people's images start to load up on the screen and you can't really see the ones that you created. 
So I'm back in my mid-journey images server, and now let's start creating some images. The most simplest way to use the mid-journey bot is to do slash imagine, and then type in the prompt that you want it to create. So I'm just gonna choose something random here like building made out of flowing curtains. Uh, let's do fabric in the middle of the desert at sunset. So we actually have to accept the terms of service before we do this. Go ahead and accept it. Read the terms of service and then you should be good to go. So you can see here that it's starting to load and it's at 31% fast, 62% fast. It's slowly loading and when it's done, you'll have a pretty clear image in the end. Right now we're using version four. So version four will give you four images and you can see, amazing, right? It is fabric flowing in the middle of the desert. It's pretty good. And the great thing is you can make these prompts pretty long if you want to and more specific. So for instance, if I wanted to do Imagine building made out of flowing fabric in the middle of the desert with people walking around looking at it. Like it was like an exhibit or something. Okay, so we can see that it created a new one and it's got people walking around. Not everything is gonna be perfect in the image. And what you're gonna be left with is this image with four different variations of your prompt. Right below the image that was created, you have nine options. U1, U2, U3, U4 means upscale. Upscale one, two, three, or four. And the images are numbered as so. One, two, three, four. So if you wanted to upscale image one, you would click this one and it would upscale this image to this one, and so on and so forth. Next is this button that looks like a refresh button. This will simply just rerun your prompt and because it's AI, it'll come out as a different image each time. Below upscale one, two, three, and four, you have variation one, two, three, and four. Variation will choose that image and then it will run it through mid journey one more time. It'll change it up a little bit. So let's say I didn't like you know, two, three, and four, but I loved number one, I would click variation one. Now that it's done, you can see that all four of these new variations are very similar to the first image and the first prompt. Let's say that I like image number three and I wanna use it for a project or I wanna send it to someone. Because it created four of them, it's somewhat of a low resolution. And really this is just to give you options to choose from. So I'm gonna go with four is pretty nice. So I'm gonna do upscale four. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna take image number four and it's gonna upscale it. It will change a little bit, but it will be a larger resolution. Now that your image is complete, you can see that you actually have eight more options to choose from. Some of these are pretty self-explanatory, like the four at the bottom ask you pretty much if you like the image. So that way you can give the AI some feedback. Above it, you have make variations, which will make four new variations of that image. Light upscale redo will rerun your prompt under a different algorithm. The outcome is typically a little bit softer, the lighting is a little bit different, and the image tends to be a little bit more airy or experiential. Beta upscale redo will upscale the image and try to make it a little bit more detailed for you. Web will actually bring you to midjourney.com where you have all of your own personal images uploaded to. Let's go ahead and click web. Click, yep. And now you're gonna go ahead and sign in. After you click sign in, it's gonna ask you to log into your account. And now Discord is asking if you would like mid journey to be able to link to your account and access it. Go ahead and click authorize. Now you're gonna be given some options. You can do the basic standard or pro plan. Personally, I do the basic plan because I don't use it a lot, but I do create, let's see, it says here, approximately 200 generations a month. I easily do that because I make content about that. If you're interested in seeing some of the content that I've created with it, like architecture thesis topics or architecture projects, check out this video link up here. And I'll also throw some links in the description for you. If you would like to subscribe to some of these yearly billings, that's great. Or you have monthly options as well. Let's head over to home. And now you can see the images that you've created. You can actually download them from within Discord, but I like to come over to the website and check them all out because usually I create a lot of images at once, but likely you'll probably download them from Discord. So I'll show you both ways. Right now we're on the Mid Journey website. You simply hover over the image, 
click these three dots and click Save Image. If you're in Discord, you're going to click the image, right click it, and click Save Image. If you're interested in learning more about Midjourney, I'm sure you'll like these two videos that I have posted up there right now. And right beside me is a list of patrons from Patreon. It's where you can support a channel like this and you get a lot of great architecture related benefits. Like the video if you like the video, subscribe down below if you want to see more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.